I realised um, yesterday, actually, because I was kind of excited just about the space, that I didn't go through um, the machines that I'd actually bought. So this one is a little bit about some of the equipment that I acquired uh, with the money we donated from Indiegogo. So uh, what you can see here is a spectrometer. It's an ultraviolet spectrometer, and it's for measuring the thickness of thin films. So what we're looking at here, obviously, is um, solar cells. So when I uh, produce my solar cell sheet, what I need to know is the conductivity, which is just the reverse of the resistance, so that's uh, relatively easy to measure, because obviously I've got the uh, four-point probe method or my square resistor measurements uh, method that I can use to measure resistance. But I also need to know the transmittance, that is how much light is actually getting through there, and this spectrometer will measure that for me. So when I'm producing my film films for solar cells, which is uh, up and coming quite soon actually, then this is an essential piece of kit to be able to allow me to do that because it's a key metric. So we've got our, our photo spectrometer, our UV photo spectrometer there. What we've also got is uh, an analytical balance uh, sitting here, and that's um, there actually for very obvious reasons. You can't do much without an analytical balance. Uh, the thing we've got here is a 60 kilovolt um, bench top high voltage power supply. Now, the reason I've got that is for the piezoelectric inks, because obviously um, when you're using piezoelectric, you have to condition the ink. You can't just um, grind up the piezoelectric materials, you have to condition them, and you condition them using a high voltage supply. So this is for the piezoelectric stuff. Uh, we've got an, an amplifier here. This is for some of the sound stuff that I wanted to do. Uh, I also bought, uh, you can see them there, four computers. There's two of them set up here. Uh, they're obviously going to be for various bits and pieces, and I'll be networking those. There's four of them, uh, because obviously it's an open lab. So if anybody wants to come down and use stuff, then there'll be a uh, available computer for them. So I've got uh, one computer workstation with two computers set up there. I'll be setting up the other computer workstation uh, just here. This is a very nice piece of kit that I'm quite pleased with. It's actually a paint mixer. It's a high-speed stirrer mixer. So you put uh, your carriers in there, along with the materials that you prepare to the ground, and it shapes them up like mount to um, disperse them thoroughly through the carrier. You've probably seen something like this in a local paint mixing store for colour mixing. Um, this one obviously will um, be able to mix up the various components of the inks and paints that I'm making uh, quite thoroughly and quite well, but in sort of litre quantities, and so sort of 100 milliliter quantities. So we've got this uh, paint shaker stirrer mixer here, uh, industrial size, industrial strength. Sadly enough, none of this stuff is light. It, it all weighs kilos. Um, this particular thing is about 80 kilos. I had to lift it up there. It's like lifting a person by myself onto the bench. So it wasn't easy. And the way I did it was to take the top off. So I've got to put the top back on, really. Uh, but this is the KM1 pulverizer. Um, there is a paper out there actually specifically using this to make graphene. Um, that was one of the things that attracted me to it as a, uh, as a machine, is that it's actually used to make graphene. Now, purely for that, you can do lots of really interesting uh, micro-mechanical um, tribological experiments with it, and I'm going to be doing that. Um, one of the things it will do is disperse metal nanoparticles quite happily down to sort of the um, four to five uh, micron range, so, no, sorry, nanometer range. It's a very, very useful piece of kit. So as I said, this is the KM1 if you want to look, up, look it up. Um, I didn't pay the uh, full price for this. The full price for this is something in the region of £6,000. I paid £1,000 for it, so I'm quite pleased with that, really. So what we're looking at here is a furnace. It's a uh, cremati kiln, actually. It'll go up to 1,200 degrees centigrade. And obviously that's um, for some of the higher temperature stuff when we're looking at reducing um, carbon compounds with uh, nickel or iron um, catalysts into graphitic carbon and conductive carbons. Uh, I make some of the carbon foams in this stuff. I've had this before, obviously, but it's now here in place. The other thing that I got is this. So we have this thing. I haven't got it out of its packing case yet because this weighs 125 kilos and I need some help getting it out of there and actually onto a bench. So I need to make a bench for that and then I get a friend to, with a car hoist to hoist it onto the bench. press. So I use it for, I'm going to use it for two things. One is for some tablets that I plan on making 
and um, the other is for the soap. So this is how I tabletize the soap here. So we have a tablet press there. So I have a couple of these things. These are um, automatic Muller grinders. You've seen me use this before actually. It's a, a wet grinder and uh, it's a, a shear process that is low energy but does some actually quite remarkable things for mixing stuff. So it mixes very thoroughly and uh, applies a shear force to it and we'll just run round and round and round for hours doing that quite happily. And um, I have two of these to um, use for mixing pastes and inks with. So there you go, a quick tour of some of the machines I've picked up. Now obviously there are always other things uh, you can get. You have to do the best with what you've got and the best that you think you're able to. I mean, there's a ton of stuff I could still do with. I could do with an industrial scale homogenizer, for instance. I'm using a blender at the moment. But those things are £2,000, so I'm not likely to get one of them anytime soon. Although I am talking to a friend about the possibility of making them. So uh, watch this space on that one. You never know. We might actually come up with one that's slightly less expensive than £2,000. Now, the main machine is yet to arrive, obviously. When the main machine arrives, we'll be up and cooking, so to speak. But We'll get going as we get going and pick up all the other things that we need as we go along. I mean, a ramen would be another great thing, but they're about five or six thousand pounds, and we'll, we'll get there. It's just that this is the beginning, and I hope you think I've been um, spending the money wisely. So, uh, thank you very much for watching, and thank you very much for contributing, and thank you very much for helping me to do this. And as I said, it's there really, uh, in part, so that we can share this. And again, an open invitation, if you want to come down, Please feel free. Thanks again.